What's up YouTube, Andrew here from Alright Solutions. Um, what we're going to do in this video is go over the last video that we did, which was split into five parts, um, <clears throat> and change it into a more simpler uh, way of creating a, a JSON web service. Um, what we're going to do is uh, create a brand new project. Create a, a Windows C Sharp class library and just call it JSON Web Service Demo. So once that project's loaded up. We need to uh, add a reference. And the reference is gonna to be to system.web. So this is basically so we can call the, uh, we can interface the HTTP handler, which is gonna handle the incoming processes Okay, so once that reference is added, we need to rename the class. So this could be called anything really, um, but this particular example, we're going to be getting a list of videos from the database. So I'm just going to call it get videos. Once that's renamed, um, we need to add the using. And now what we need to do is we need to add in um, a package called newtonsoft.net which allows us to uh, convert the data return from the SQL database to a, a JSON string. So we just type this into the uh, package manager console so it's install hyphen package space newtonsoft.json and then press enter. So that should go away, download and install JSON.net. Once that's done, just close that. And we need to add the reference in. Right, so now we need to add the handler. We just implement the interface there. And we can get rid of <clears throat> that for now. And delete the, uh, the throw exceptions. So the public loop bill is reusable. It basically just tells IAS um, that this, uh, this class is reusable. Um, within the application pool. Right, the process request is going to handle the incoming HTTP context. So when a request comes in, we can handle it depending on what type of request is coming in, whether it be a GET or a POST, if we're posting um, some name pairs, for example. So if we're going to get an error, I just want to pass it back to the browser so we can see what's going on. What I've not done there is just put E, uh, I've not added on the exception message as well, but that, that can be easily done. Okay, so we need a switch just to handle the context coming in. So we need to know what type of request it is. So 
So as I mentioned before, in this example we're not using the post, but we'll do that in another video. Okay, so now we've got the context request method handled. So now what we need to do is we need to add our database. Okay, so we just add a new item. And it's going to be a C sharp data set. There's all different types of um, data connections we can use, but for this example, we're just going to use the data set for ease. Let's call it videos. And we need to right click and add a new table adapter. So in this part here, the server name, I'm using my remote server name uh, that's hosted on my website. Um, so that would be the remote server name, use SQL Server Authentication, obviously the username and password goes in, and then you select the database name from there and you click on Test Connection. So once you're happy with that, um, for this purpose we're going to say yes, we're going to include sensitive data in the connection string. Next that one. Now we have the option for, which I'm going to do straight SQL here, but I tend to use a lot of store procedures. So another table name that I'm looking for, so just type it in there. Execute query and you can see that there's the list of videos that we want to be passing back. Okay that. And next. I'm going to change the method name that we're going to call, so we're just going to say this is uh, fetch videos. And we're done. Finish that. Okay, so now we need to reference the database. So what we need to do is we need to create a couple of references to the video dataset that we created. So we create a new table adapter there. And we just call it TA videos. And we need the data table as well that we're gonna pass the results into. Okay, once they're created, what we need to do now is um, populate the data set. So first off we create a new video table adapter and then we populate the data table with the results from the fetch videos names uh, function that we created. And now basically we're just going to create a, a string and then pass the results into that string. So what we'll need to do is create a JSON convert. Uh, we need to serialize an object and the object is going to be the data table. And now we need to write the response back.
Let's save that and build the solution. Alright, so that should have created a DLL for us. So let's just have a quick look. So if you look inside the projects folder where the web service is kept and in the bin and in debug. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm on my FTP server, um, which is where the website's hosted. I'm creating a new bin folder, and that uh, DLL that's just been created, I'm just going to plunk that in there. We also need the neat and soft DLL in order to convert the data table to a JSON string, so just plunk that in there as well. Once they're done, we need to create the uh, the entry within the web config. So within the root of the uh, the website, we should have a web config file. So we need to this text here, this uh, this handle is. We need to put that within the web config file just underneath or within the web sorry the system.web server and what we need to do is we've got three parts that we need to update we've got the the name the path and we've got the type as well. So the type is basically the, the namespace of the project. So that's the JSON web service demo. And then the second part, which is the class name. So that'll be get videos. So this bit here in the add name, we can put anything in there. You could have, uh, I don't know, fetch me videos, for example. And in the path as well, we could have fetch me videos as well. And in the type, as I said before, we just need to put in the namespace and the name of the class. Right, so once that's done, we should be able to browse to that URL. So we call the web service get vids. So I need to put the full URL in. And hopefully we should get a JSON string back with all the videos in it. And there we go. Hold on. If you've got any questions, uh, just leave uh, leave a message and I'll try and answer them as, as soon as I can. Um, and when I get round to it as well, I'll try and post the uh, the project on there as well, so you can have a look yourselves. Cheers.